Okay, so in this bag, I've got something in here that I have been very excited to start using. This here is the Tilta Gravity G2X gimbal. I've owned it for about four months, but I just haven't really found the best use case for it. Hey Kevin, you got a cottage, right? Okay. Any chance I'd be able to use a boat? We are good to go. Okay, I don't know where everyone is, but I'm gonna start unpacking and getting uh, this whole thing rigged up and set up um, just because that's uh, th that was my goal today. I wanted to really challenge myself to use a tool that I'm not comfortable with and a tool that I don't really like that much. I hope you guys don't hear what I'm saying and think to yourselves, oh, don't buy the Tilta um, gimbal. I'm saying that you guys should consider and think through these uh, possibilities and think through what I'm saying about all gimbals. Um, really, they all seem to have these similar problems. Doesn't matter if you get the DJI, doesn't matter if you get something from uh, Benro or the, the Weeble gimbals. There's some gimbals that are just straight up bad. There's some gimbals that are okay, but none of them really have a, a good workflow for someone like me. But I am finding that with my experience with it, I have to change the way that I'm thinking about gimbals. See, for a long time, I've been thinking about gimbals as just a camera rig, as just something that is supposed to serve me as a filmmaker. And yes, to a certain degree it is, but just because it has some inconveniences or because it's not built for every circumstance does not mean that it's a bad tool to use. Uh, here, let me pull out another example. This here is the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens. I love this lens, it's great. It was one of the first big investments I made into my filmmaking career. This right here is the Tamron 100 to 400 millimeter lens. This was one of the latest lenses that I have purchased. Honestly, I have purchased this thing and knowing that I wasn't gonna use it that often, knowing that it was made for very specific circumstances. I wasn't gonna vlog with this lens. I wasn't gonna go ahead and start filming commercials with this lens. This lens is made for nature photography or maybe for uh, some sporting events, something along those lines. Now, was I upset when I found out that this couldn't do everything that this could do? No, because I expected it. That's something that these tools are made for. This and this are very similar. They both are very niche, tools that have their place in their own way. Some photographers will only be carrying this lens and will only be needing something like this. For myself, I don't use it that often and I don't beat myself up for it and I don't think that it was a total waste for me investing in a telephoto lens. It's just doesn't suit every need. And this gimbal is very much like this lens. And when, I think I just came up with a great idea. And now look at us, we're ready to go. We're at 200 millimeters on the Fujifilm X-T2 on a gimbal. Ah, this is obviously the best vlogging setup I've ever used. So I really wanted to try on the Tamron lens, but unfortunately it's just a little bit too clunky, a little bit too large. I just think that this will probably do the trick a little bit better. And so far, I kind of like it. Okay, let's get onto this dock with thousands of dollars of equipment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yes, please. I'm not swimming towards you. <laughs> this is the probably one of the most sketchy things I've done with my equipment. Wow, honestly guys, I'm blown away with this footage. I think the gimbal did a fantastic job at just being able to take care of all of the, the shakes and the jitters from my own hands and my own body, as well as the boat itself. This boat is on unstable water and it's hitting that water at 
50 miles an hour. This is probably one of the most extreme examples of using a gimbal. Not only that, we're on a 200 millimeter lens. It's like looking through a pinhole and just trying to keep that straight. With a wide angle lens, things can look fairly stable. If you guys saw some of the behind the scenes shots that were taken, shot on a really wide angle lens, like 12 millimeters. And so the wider your field of view is, the less you notice things changing and things shifting about because it's not the same as when you're moving like this. When you move that much with a wider angle lens, it's like, it's barely an adjustment. The things that are in the center are still somewhat in the center, as opposed to when you're tight on a lens, it can shift about all over the place and it looks like you're waving your camera around like a flag. Like, it's nuts. Focus, focus, come on, focus, focus. Why am I not getting focus? But something that I found that you really do need, you need to have good autofocus when you are using a setup like this because you can't be going in front of your camera and racking focus. The subject is on a rope, so the subject isn't changing how far apart they are from me, so I could kind of make it work with manual focus, but really I just found that I got the best results when I used autofocus. I also really overestimated how far my subject will be from the boat. So I took my camera and I zoomed it all the way in as far as I could, so I could just see like neck up. I couldn't see the, their entire bodies, I couldn't see their entire action, so I actually zoomed out while I was on the boat, after I had already calibrated the gimbal to having the lens zoomed all the way out like that. So like right now, I'm holding this lens with two fingers and it's staying whereabouts it should. If I move my finger over this way, it like tips over like that. If I move my finger over this way, it tips the other direction. So somewhere around there is, uh, is, is about the center of gravity. Now let's say I zoom in, the center of gravity has now changed this way. Zooming in and out, changes so much, it changes the balance of the gimbal. And once we reached shore and I turned off the gimbal, the, the head of the gimbal went like that. It flung backwards with the with the lens hang, pointing upwards. Like it was very poorly balanced um, just because the lens was no longer zoomed all the way in like I had before. So that was my fault and that was my mistake. However, if you look at the footage, the motors are incredibly strong and they're compensating for uh, my stupidity. If you just look at these shots, they are rock solid. So am I happy with these shots? Am I happy with the gimbal and its overall performance? Absolutely. However, there's one thing that I need to bring up. As you saw in the video, I got there before everyone else did and I started setting up the gimbal. And I had a couple little problems setting it up and I had some some trouble here and there, and it took me longer than I had hoped, longer than it usually takes for me to balance this thing. And uh, my friends, they went ahead on the boat and they started water skiing without me. I don't blame them. I was taking way too long and the sun was setting and everyone wanted to have their turn. But I missed out on these opportunities. I missed out on shooting some, some scenes. And I even thought, is this even worth it? Am I gonna get really stable shots if I use a gimbal? Like, can I just go handheld? And honestly, if I wasn't making this video and talking about this gimbal, I probably would have just done that and I think that that would have been a big mistake. So these are some shots I took a couple of years ago. Very similar setting, very similar activity, but we're also using two different boats. So it's not a perfect comparison, but I still think that you can get a general idea of the shots that you can expect when you're shooting handheld in a setting like this, and when you're using a good quality gimbal like I had. Oh, this is what this thing was built for. So I think that the big difference between shooting handheld and shooting with a gimbal is that with the gimbal, I was able to pick and choose based off of what the best action and what the best lighting circumstance was. When I was shooting handheld, all I could do was look for when the camera wasn't ridiculously shaky. So you have a lot more flexibility and that's something I really like. So in this case scenario, I think that this was the perfect product for this job. However, if I was filming a wedding, Absolutely not. I'm not missing out on the cutting of the cake or the first kiss or the vows. I cannot miss out on those crucial moments if I'm filming a wedding. This tool is not a convenient tool at all. And if you're wondering about buying a gimbal or you're in the market for a gimbal, these are just some things that you need to keep in mind. What are the things that you're shooting? Are you shooting real estate videos? Are you shooting sporting events? Or are you shooting weddings and commercials? Honestly, this whole experience has made me realize how much I miss shooting sports and shooting action. I, I love this so much um, and I had such a good time and I love the results I got. I think you really have to pay attention to what your gear is capable of and really tailor your needs and tailor the shooting style that you have towards your gear. If you're doing a lot of things that are planned out and you have everything figured out, then gimbals are really great for that. But if you're just running around and hoping that you're gonna get some great shots, the spray and pray technique where you just 
capture as much footage as you can and then condense it down and edit it into something that actually makes sense, this isn't the tool for you. So if you own a gimbal and you wanna use it, think through some shots that you can only get with using a gimbal that you can't get with any other tool and use that in a way that's specific and add a lot of value to your production. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that jazz, and I will see you next time. Take care.